Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to be learning how to do some one step strong acid base calculations. So let's jump right in and take a look. And whenever we're doing some strong acid base calculations, whether they're one step like in this video or two step later on, this little diagram that we see right here is going to be helpful to you in solving those types of problems. So have this out in front of you. And so let's take a look at this first example. It says the pH of a sulfuric acid solution is 5.45. We want to determine the hydronium ion concentration. So in this problem right here, we know the pH of this solution is 5.45. And what we want to do is figure out the hydronium ion concentration. So anytime you know the pH and you want to figure out the hydronium ion concentration, it's simple. We just take 10 to the negative, whatever the pH is. So in this problem here, we're asked to figure out the H3O plus concentration. And the way that we're going to do this is by taking 10 to the negative, whatever the pH value of our solution is going to be. So we'll take 10 to the negative 5.45. And when we put this in our calculator, we're going to end up with a concentration equal to 3.55 times 10 to the negative 6. Don't forget our unit. Whenever we're dealing with concentrations of acids and bases, it's typically going to be molar or moles per liter. All right, so if we have a solution, in this case a sulfuric acid solution, and its pH is 5.45, well, that means the concentration of hydronium ions that are floating around in that solution is 3.55 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. Let's take a look at another example. In this second example, it says a solution of sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, has a pH of 12.21. We want to calculate the pOH of this solution. So sodium hydroxide, the chemical formula for this is NaOH. We know sodium is a positive one charge. Hydroxide is a one minus charge. And so our chemical formula of this is NaOH. And so we see here that if we have one mole of this entire thing right here, it's going to dissociate and break apart into one mole of sodium ions and one mole of OH minus ions. And that's going to be a, an important concept to understand when we work on a later example. But for now, understand that the chemical formula for this is NaOH. And so if we take a look, we know the pH of this solution is 12.21. So we know that the pH of this solution of sodium hydroxide is 12.21 and we want to know what the pOH is. So to figure out the pOH, take a look. All we need to do is take 14 minus the pH. So to get our pOH of this solution, all we're going to do here is take 14 minus the pH value. And so we're going to take 14 minus the pH, which it tells us is 12.21. And when we put this in our calculator, we're going to end up with 1.79. Okay, so there we go. If the pH of our solution is 12.21, the pOH is going to be equal to 1.79. And that is because pH plus pOH is always going to equal 14. So keep that in mind. All right, let's take a look at another example. In this third example, it says the hydronium ion concentration of a perchloric acid solution. Keep in mind, perchloric acid is a strong acid. And the hydronium ion concentration is 5.32 times 10 to the negative eighth molar. We want to determine the pH. So in this problem here, we know the hydronium ion concentration of this solution of perchloric acid is right here. And what we're asked to figure out is the pH. We want to know the pH of this solution. So all we need to do is take the negative log of our hydronium ion concentration. So in this problem here, to get the pH of our strong acid, in this case perchloric acid, we're simply going to take the negative log of our hydronium ion concentration. And so we're going to take the negative log of 5.32 times 10 to the negative 8th. And when we put this in our calculator, we're going to end up with a pH of 7.27. 7.27 is our final answer here. So if we have 
a perchloric acid solution in which the hydronium ion concentration is this right here. It's going to have a pH of 7.27. Let's take a look at another example. In this fourth example, it says the hydroxide ion concentration of hydrochloric acid is 1.75 times 10 to the negative sixth. We want to calculate the pOH of this solution. So in this problem here, if we read it carefully, we know the hydroxide ion concentration. It's this right here. We are asked to calculate the pOH of this solution. So how do we do this? Well, it looks like all we need to do here is take the negative log of our hydroxide ion concentration. So to get the pOH of this solution of perchloric or hydrochloric acid here, all we need to do is take the negative log of our OH minus concentration or hydroxide ion concentration. And so this is the negative log of 1.75 times 10 to the negative sixth. And when we put this in our calculator, we're going to end up with a pH of 5.76. So if we have some hydrochloric acid where the hydroxide ion concentration is this, the pOH of that solution is going to be 5.76. Let's take a look at another example. In this fifth example, it tells us that the hydroxide ion concentration of this strong base right here, lithium hydroxide, keep in mind that lithium is a positive one ion and hydroxide is a negative one ion. So our chemical formula for this lithium hydroxide is simply going to be LiOH. And it tells us the hydroxide ion concentration is 7.75 times 10 to the negative fourth. So we know the hydroxide ion concentration it tells us in the problem what we're asked to calculate is the hydronium ion concentration so we want to figure this out right here so how do we do this problem well here's our little formula all we need to do is take the ion product constant 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th and divide it by the given quantity or the hydroxide ion concentration so in this problem here to get our h3o plus concentration all we're going to do here is take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we're going to divide this by our hydroxide ion concentration, 7.75 times 10 to the negative 4th. And we're going to put this in our calculator and we're going to get 1.29. Times 10 to the negative 11th. And don't forget that this is a concentration. The brackets here mean it's a concentration and we're dealing with acids and bases. This is gonna be molar or moles per liter. So if the hydroxide ion concentration of lithium hydroxide in solution is this right here, then the hydronium ion concentration is gonna be this right here. Let's take a look at another example. In this sixth example, it says the pOH of hydrochloric acid solution is 4.65. We want to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. So in this problem, we know what the pOH is. It tells us it's 4.65. What we want to do is figure out the hydroxide ion concentration. So all we need to do is take 10 to the negative pOH. So let's go ahead and do that. In this problem here, we are asked to calculate the OH minus concentration of our solution. And to do this, we need to take 10 to the negative pOH, which means we have to take 10 to the negative 4.65. And when we take 10 to the negative 4.65 in our calculator, we're going to end up with 2.24 times 10 to the negative fifth. And don't forget, this here is a concentration, so it needs some sort of unit. And this unit here in this case is going to be molar or moles per liter, the molarity of the solution. All right, let's take a look at another example. In this example, it tells us the hydronium ion concentration of a perchloric acid solution is 1.23 times 10 to the negative 2. We want to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. So in this problem, if you take a look, we know the hydronium ion concentration. It's this right here. What we're asked to figure out is the hydroxide ion concentration. So how do we do this problem? Well, take a look. All we need to do is take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th and divide it by our hydronium ion concentration. So to get our hydroxide ion concentration, 
we're going to take the ion product constant, which we learned about in an earlier video, and we're going to divide this by the hydronium ion concentration, which in the problem it tells us is 1.23 times 10 to the negative 2. And when we put this in our calculator, we're going to end up with 8.13 times 10 to the negative 13th. You guessed it. The brackets here tell us this is a concentration. And when we're using this little diagram here, the concentrations are going to be molar or moles per liter. All right, so there we go. Let's take a look at another example. In this eighth example, it says a solution of sulfuric acid has a pOH of 10.21. We need to calculate the pH. So we know the pOH of our solution. It tells us it's 10.21. We want to figure out the pH. So we're trying to figure out the pH. And so if we take a look to get the pH of our solution, all we need to do is take 14 minus the pOH. 14 minus the pOH. So our pOH here is 10.21. And when we subtract these two numbers, we're going to end up with a pH of 3.79. And so always remember once again that the pH of our solution plus the pOH of our solution is always going to equal 14. This is just like saying that the H plus or H3O plus concentration times the OH minus concentration will always equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. Okay, so understand that concept. Let's take a look at one final example. In this final example, it says a solution of calcium hydroxide, which is a strong base, has a concentration of 6.74 times 10 to the negative 4th moles per liter. We want to calculate the pOH. So in this problem right here, if you're taking a look, we don't know the hydroxide ion concentration here because this. We know that calcium hydroxide is Ca2 plus and hydroxide is OH minus. And so this isn't the correct chemical formula for this, uh, this compound here. What we have to do is we have to put parentheses around here. And so our correct chemical formula when we add a subscript here is going to be CaOH2. Remember that the ionic charges have to add up to zero. The way that we do that is by adding a subscript. So here's our chemical formula here. And so if we put one mole of this in water, it looks like it's going to dissociate into two moles of hydroxide ions. And so in this problem right here, it's telling us that the concentration of this entire thing, of the entire calcium hydroxide compound, is equal to 6.74 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. However, that is not the concentration of just the hydroxide. Keep in mind, when we put this in water, it's going to dissociate into two moles of hydroxide ions for every one mole of this entire thing right here. So to get our OH minus concentration right here, what we have to do is we have to take two times the concentration of calcium hydroxide, 6.74 times 10 to the negative fourth. And we're going to end up with a hydroxide ion concentration of 1.35 times 10 to the negative 2. But this is not our final answer. This is just the concentration of OH minus ions. Now we're asked to calculate the pOH of this solution right here. So we have to take it a step further. And so all we have to do now is take the negative log of our OH minus concentration, which we just figured out was this right here. So let's go ahead and do that. All we need to do now to get the pOH of this solution is simply take the negative log of our OH minus concentration and so we'll take the negative log of 1.35 times 10 to the negative 2. And when we put this in our calculator, we're going to end up with a pOH equaling 1.87. Okay, so keep that in mind. Whenever you have hydroxide bonded to an atom from group 2, group two on the periodic table. You might have to take a look at that and see how it's going to dissociate. And if you have a subscript two here, 
you are going to have to uh, probably multiply the concentration by two provided uh, that it's bonded to an atom from group two. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner. That will subscribe to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions down in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.